Now I've mixed up some greens for the trees and I'm using the small brush to start with and the reason I'm not speaking at the moment is because I'm being careful. I just want to get a start of those trees at the top and then I can work down and I'll work down with a slightly bigger brush. Yeah, now just put a couple of those branches in, a couple more there. Now this is where I must start with a bigger brush or otherwise I shall get fiddly. So I'm going down, going on to a number four brush now. Now they're all dark, um, almost silhouetted against the mountain. And this comes right down at the side of the house and down to the distance to the bottom now. This must be reasonably blue. If when you're painting you there's something you can't understand and there's no way of finding out, then paint what you see. Uh, don't try and make it up, just paint what you see and if it's indistinct in, in real life, make it indistinct in the picture and it'll always look alright. And I think while I'm just doing this I shall put the house in. Blue roof or it isn't it is a blue roof, but from here it's difficult to tell. But it's got to be bluish because it's in the distance. One, a dormer window at the top by the looks of things. I'm going to paint this harbour wall here. And also, while I've got the dark on, I'm going to put the lock gate in up at this end. We've put our dark in there. I think uh, we're now ready for putting in the boats. Boat time, folks. It's boats. Well, this one is at the back. Let's put it in first. It's a blue boat. Mind you, from the distance I was, I wasn't sure whether it was blue or whether it was just a very dark, well, almost black, if you like. But it just gives it a little bit more if we get some blue in there. Um, and there was a darker area here. It's really, it's nice, isn't it? Going down and under. And the, oh, let's get this side in next. Um, I mustn't forget this is because this is a dark side, of course. Although it could have a bit of reflected light on it, just to pull it away from the from the harbour wall but we'll get it in first, the main part of the boat. Nice and dark under there, that's it. Let's put these windows in a bit more. Now this blue yacht. Let's start at the top and I'll get the dark side in. Actually that's a bit blue there for where it's dark. It needs to be that's a bit blue there for where it's dark. It needs to be more rich. I'm adding a bit more yellow ochre and a bit more crimson to it. That's better. It's only a reflected light that's caught up at the that end of the boat. I'll leave it like that for the time being and then I'll come back to it but uh, that just needs adjusting. Again one of the beauties of oil paint we can do just that. That's got that settled. I think next is the water or the reflections. A weeny bit too solid green, a bit too warm, but we want to get some green into it. Just spread it a bit, that's it. Brushes working like little waves along there. Now this is where we've got bright blue sky coming through, but as it gets closer, it gets more into yellow colour and I've got that already mixed to carry on. Now I'm dragging into that wet paint 
underneath and make sure the your lines are horizontal or otherwise the water is going to look as though it's falling off the canvas and now I'll go into it with the lighter colour and this is where I'm going to use a larger brush going into a number four and just now drag it through where I want it to go through these darks and I'm now starting to get freer with the brush stroke. Now let's, oh gosh, that's a bit strong. I'm just starting to put in the, the flagstones. That was a weeny bit strong. Again, you can't tell until you've got it on the canvas. I, want, I must watch that edge because that edge is against the dark there and it could even be a bit lighter for that reason. So let's just make it a weeny bit lighter coming down through there. And these, I, I've got the shapes underneath. Uh, we drew them in at the very beginning, but I'm still working the brush in the shapes, and I'm following the shapes that I'd already drawn. Um, so let's put one in there, and then when I've got this edge on, which I'm being quite careful with, I can then come back and work all over this with the more free and also <coughs> with some of the colour of wet stones. Now I've le left the painting for a while, in fact for a few hours, for it to dry a bit more. And that's going to help with putting in the detail that I've got to do, although I could have carried on with it wet, but it just does help a little bit. So you want to do that if, you, if of course you have got the time to leave it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start, I'm using the mile stick now by the way, uh, because I want to do the masts and I shall put them in, holding at the top, it's nice and firm. I'm using a bit of turps with this, so it, it does flow a bit easier. Right, I think it's time we put these figures in around the boat. They're done very, very simply. All I'm going to do is put a little bit of flesh colour, if you like, it's for, for the head. Uh, there's another one, say, stood there. And uh, we'll just have those three at the moment. I might put someone else around there. But that's all we need at this stage. And then dark colour on the brush for this chap standing on the side of the Kia. In fact, I think he's on the boat. Yes. Now, his legs aren't separated. They're just sort of in one lump there, but that doesn't matter. Uh, if we're worried about that or concerned about let's put that person in, another person there, just put his hair on. Uh, what I will do, I will separate that, the legs, with a little bit of that grey paint that goes behind. Let's have a light-coloured person now, in a, or shall we say with a light top on here because it's nice, it's light against dark. Could even have it a bit whiter than that. So there. In fact, that blue, will I'll keep that blue there because that's, uh, that's good for the legs. Now, I want a little bit of dark again. I'm using the same brush all the time, a little bit of dark just to suggest the hair. Just put a bit down there, perhaps a bit there. And we want the hair on this, this chap up here and he's talking to that one down there so that goes that side uh, let's say if there's something down there just sort of do a few little fiddles you can see how simple the brush strokes are I'm not getting complicated I'm not trying to uh, paint figures as such as though it's detail uh, as though it's portraits it's just a suggestion he's not he, you can, I, in fact I think I'll put an arm out then it can be seen a bit more but he's He's just sort of drifted very palely almost into the background, but this is good because he's just there. I just want him to be seen, not, not to stand out. Well, I've got one or two details to do now, and I'll settle into it, so have a look. Let's have a look at these, the fence uh, that is up here on the edge of the lock. I'm doing this with a rigger. Um, and notice where, where it's coming down, where these, they're very subtle, of course, as usual. They're not, they're not brightly coloured, 
Um, or, or I should say, bright standing out. Well, that's lucky. That, that matches, doesn't it? <laughs> it was all luck coming across there. That one works out just right. So I'm OK uh, in distance between them. So all I'm doing is putting them in with a, a rigger and reasonably wet paint, uh, runny paint, that is. Or otherwise, it, they, would, they would be too sticky to get on there and you would find that you was getting very thick posts and not thin ones. And so that's that. Now they've got railings across. Now notice how simple I'm doing this. I'm not trying to make it equal. I'm not trying to make them all join up and look exact. Or otherwise it would look far too too neat. Now, um, I want to put the fenders on here. So let's just drop them down like that. And one over here. It's just a brush stroke. I'm doing this, by the way, with, um, with the sable. It, look, see, I'm dragging the paint up underneath. It's giving shadow. Can you see that? Look, look, isn't that lovely? That's ideal, that. Look at that, got the shadow on it. That's nice. Now, uh, that's got to be reflected in the water, or they have got to be reflected in the water. So let's have a look and just suggest that one there. And that one there. Right, I'm still using the sable, and I want to get in some of these details on the, on the uh, flagstones. And when I say details, it, it's not as much detail as just showing that they they aren't laying flat and these are the edges um, on the stones and it shows where it's sort of kicking up and um, it certainly helps to give a bit more character to them than just having them very equal and we don't want them equal because they weren't anyway but we shouldn't show them we should show them nice and rough and broken away like they were Right, now to the reflections. Well, we've already painted the reflections, but what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the mast reflections. And I'm working over the original one, uh, but I'm letting it just go its own way. I'm not necessarily copying exactly the shape. Oh, the, there is another mast. There's that one that goes up there. You can just see it coming out, so we'll just put it in gently. We don't want it in very much. What we'll do, there's one up there, actually, just at the back of this, just a little bit. The last thing I want to do is to paint the birds. One, I must get the brush just right. It's got to be just right so I can just flick them. Just a little flick. There we are. That's all finished now. I'm happy with it. Naturally, I could go on painting that for a long time and putting more work in and more detail. But there's got to come a time when you finish. And if you're happy with the painting, that's great. Can you smell that? I can't. That's a low odour thinners. You see, it's great. Remember, it doesn't smell like turps, so you can do it indoors if you like. And it's simple. It's not that difficult, as long as you take it stage by stage. It's a lovely thing to do is oil painting. But don't forget, you must practice. Another thing, when you're working, your own style will start to come out. Well, let your style come out. That's what you're going for. It's you that's painting it. If you copy this and it alters, don't worry. That's what it's all about. You are an individual. Anyway, why don't you have a go? It's easier than you think. Now available to buy. 
Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.